hello guys good evening today i want us to talk about more into detail about emotions as i have discussed in our last in the last video so i want to delve a bit more into trading with emotions and what it actually entails so i have highlighted just two things that i want to talk about i mean three things then answer some questions i received so <clears throat> trading with emotion so i want to talk about greed then fear depression or say lack of confidence so that is what i'll be talking about this night and i hope i can wrap it up quickly so let's get started so when 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 we talk about greed, I was in trading with emotions. How, how do we trade with emotions? You know, normally we as human beings we have some emotions in us, and we are bound to show care, love, or get attached to something that we do care about. Some may be easily, some may be not so easy. But we as humans, we are emotional beings. And we can easily get attached to something, either by by love or by hate. So, it's part of us. It's in our psychology. It's wired into us. But when when we when we do trade and then we do trade with emotions, what could what how can it impact our trading life? Will it impact it in a positive way or will it impact it in a negative way? Which is why. The issue of greed and fear, then, which brings up either too much confidence or lack of confidence into your trading game. So, so let's see what is greed in its in its in itself. What is greed in itself? I think greed is the desire to have more of what you already have like when you have something but then you still want more some people will say is lack of contentment you are not contented with what you already have if you don't have something and you get something or for example you don't have money on you but you need money right everybody needs money but then assuming you are broke no cash on you then you ah, if i can easily get maybe a hundred dollars i'll be able to solve my immediate problem or I'll be able to solve my problem for the next two, three days. That is a target. Say, or let's say just let's say a week maximum. You are targeting a week maximum, and you say, Oh, if I can get like two hundred dollars, I should be fine for the week. One step at a time. Assuming then you get that very two hundred dollar, then you start adding more problems for yourself. The two hundred dollars that should take you for the week as you have foresighted, that is when you say, Oh, oh um, this two hundred dollar won't do ah. I suppose go 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 out with my guys. I suppose drink one or two bottles at least. You have the money to solve to solve your immediate problems that you may be feeding, eat, or whatever emergency you have for that week. But then when you have the two hundred, you start having the desire to have more. You start having the desire to have more just because you want to take your girlfriend out you want to eat at a nice restaurant that you don't even really need you want to, you just want to do more things so you start adding more problems for yourself just because you are getting greedy but if you can stick to your plan okay i want 200 you have the 200 okay fine you can even find a way to cut costs and save from that 200 so that it can even take you a bit further than the week foresighted by you so that is great lack of contentment so how does lack of contentment play out when you are trading everybody trades to make money right so we do trade to make money and for example let's say let's do this technically let's say we have a an account balance of let's say we have an account balance of of ten thousand dollars we have an account balance of ten thousand dollars and 
our risk is 1% of the balance which we equate which we equate 1% of 10,000 which will equate $100 so so that is our risk and then let's say our target our target of risk reward risk reward sorry our target risk reward is one to three one is a risk three is a reward the target so if we lose on this trade we lose a hundred dollars if we win on this trade we profit a three hundred dollar one to three keeping it simple okay this is a scenario now this is our plan right we have a balance of ten thousand our risk is hundred and our target is one to three no matter the percentage move now let's say we have or should i use this bit to see okay let's say okay let's start from let me draw this boss so i'll be looking at from here to this particular place so sounds too bright I'm gonna say from here, okay. Okay, so now what do we have from this chart as an example? We what I'm saying is we have a low here. I'm starting from this mark. I'm disregarding all these other data to the left for the purpose of example. So we have a low here. We have this low, sorry. We have this low. This is the lowest low. We have that low. We have this eye. I don't know if you guys can see this. What's happening? Okay. okay we have this low we have this high then we have this low again and we have this high now let me change the color of this to green being the low we can use it as support at this one another green this one to be red the point of resistance and this one to be red okay so we have these two loops we have these two ways and what happened we have this move from this low to this eye then to this low breaking this eye to this eye breaking this eye oh sorry so what do we have here? We have a low to an eye, an higher low, an higher eye. So we have a bullish structure as it is. A bullish structure. When we have a low with an higher low, then printing an higher high to the previous side. We have a bullish structure. What is our expectation here? Our expectation is that price is to come down anywhere but not breaking this very low to so come down and then and then push back off printing another ii to keep the bullishness in place so if i draw the trend line or the momentum line come joining these two lows this very low this private low with this other low so I, exactly so i expect price to from this low up up then come down here and push higher but if it breaks this trend line that can be an early indication that this low is likely to break but only this until this very low breaks is when the market structure breaks 
but this is not a lesson for market structure so assuming we have this structure in play what is our bias our bias is that we want to go long on this very trade when it retraces back into anywhere we may be of interest to buy anywhere we choose to buy depends on what we choose to trade with as in our trading strategy i can choose to trade support and resistance which means when the price trades back in i will be looking to buy anywhere from this region as a previous point of resistance turn to support if that is your trading method if you trade supply and demand you can choose to buy at this point of little consolidation or even from here downward but there is a little bit of buying pressure here so you may want to go along there and if you trade trend lines or channels because on this we see like a big channel going something like that not perfect it doesn't have to be perfect but that is the idea that the channel is going so you may want to buy at this lower momentum line or lower channel whenever it comes back into it and expect it to trade back into the upper trend line which is the upper line of the channel so now assuming we are using fibonacci as fibonacci traders so looking at this structure this low leads to another high once we draw our oh sorry okay so let's assume we want to trade with fibonacci so where will be the point of trading this fibonacci the point at which i will choose to trade the fibonacci is at the 68 this is the 68 level down to the 78 Seven is zero point seven is that the seventy eight point six percent level? Let me mask the zone. So say this zone up to this zone will be my buy zone. This is a sixty two level and this is a seventy eight level. Now from the previous from the previous video, I said you may be placing your stop if you have to buy here and place your stop here don't forget that all through this zone is a buy zone so if you are placing stop here you are probably placing stop at where some people are also buying so the best place to place your stop will be somewhere around here but that apart also trading trend lines people want to buy on the trend and just take a bit down to place their stop but that won't matter for now so how do you get greedy back to the topic so assuming we are buying on this tip let's say we buy we add our buys we buy here we buy at the middle here and we buy here we scaling so let's assume on an assumption let's assume we place a stop here Let's assume that is where we have a stop. Okay, let's assume we have a stop there. We buy all through here. We have a stop here. And we are risking a hundred. But buying here year and year means this will not be our entry price after all if all the buy fuels this will not be our entry price this will not be our entry price this will not be our entry price. we have to find the average from the three depending on how much you buy okay from you are risking one percent and let's calculate let's calculate the position size first okay yeah now we have ten thousand 
we're using one R spot. We are risking one percent. Assuming, assuming our target is let's say twenty two percent for the target stop. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Let's just use a single entry. Let's to not to complicate things. Let's say we are getting in at this very line, and our stop is here. So distance to stop will be from here to here. That's like six point eight. Six point eight one percent, and our profit I get to be twenty two percent. So we are trading with three point two three risk reward. Okay. Our position size will be thousand four six eight. Okay. So here we are buying thousand four six eight amount of Bitcoin thousand four six eight USD. Why our risk is one hundred. This means. If we take profit at this level, we are taking a profit of how much? Profit of 323. Okay. Profit of 323 USD at this level. Let me remove this lines. And if we eat if our stop gets uh, if if the price is a stop loss, we will lose a hundred at this level. So we are risking hundred here to make three hundred if everything goes well. Now, the trade comes into your buy zone, takes your entry, takes your order, your order gets filled, didn't eat stop loss, comes straight into your take profit. You make a profit of three hundred and twenty-three dollars. Now, what happens? You take another trade. Assuming we have the same scenario for all the trades you're taking, it comes, it takes, fills your order, doesn't come towards your stop, goes for your take profit, and then you take another three hundred and twenty-three dollar profit. Then the third time. The same thing happens. It doesn't go for your stop plus at all. Then it comes for your target. You make another three hundred and twenty-three dollars. Maybe you have more losing trade. It comes here, take out your stop loss, so you lose a hundred dollars. This one should be negative. You lose a hundred dollars. Then you take another trade. Or maybe total five is one, two, three, four. Yeah, you take another day, you win. If you are someone like me that likes to keep track of their of their trades, which is very important actually, then you analyze your trades. You analyze these five trades. First one, good, second, good, third, good, fourth, not so good. Then the fourth one, good. Out of five trades, you win four. It is normal and human for you to build some kind of emotions and courage that, oh yeah, you are doing good, right? But this, sometimes, it gives you some level of confidence that, oh, out of four trades, if you even win two, based on our risk management lesson, if you, if you win two out of five trades with your proper risk, you still make profit overall, right? So this kind of gives you some kind of courage. But then it's greed. It's greed. So what does greed do? It drives your emotions. And your emotions make you to take decisions that you may not necessarily take on a good day when you have a clear head. You are risking under which is 1% of your balance and you are making money. From this, from this three trades, you have made some decent amount of money. Say three, let's assume 300, 300, that's 600, that's 1,200. Not bad, not bad, right? But then you start saying, Oh, thousand two hundred, you can do more. 
the courage start coming from nowhere you can do more you can do more which of course you can do so how do you achieve more if you get greedy to make more money how do you achieve more you either increase your risk by increasing the percentage maybe you decide then to risk two percent of your capital which is two percent will then be 200 then you start to risk 200 and this means let me just set this to one figure 300 this means if you are risking 200 then the end end profit of you are you are, you are, you are to make should be 600 is double because you have doubled your risk is double let's see here what it will say now we have changed the risk to two percent which is 200 the risk is 200 exactly it's double so so now you are still using a very comfortable risk like i said your risk is individual is it depends on individual tolerance what you can afford to lose what you can afford to lose might not be what i can afford to lose out of ten thousand i personally can choose to risk a thousand dollars if i risk a thousand dollars at this level to stop then it means at this level of my three year when i win i'm taking three thousand dollars profit is my tolerance it's my trade is my limit whatever you can call it so but then some people out of greed they ignore stop looking at all the four trades only one took out their stop loss four they didn't even come close to it they just took out their price maybe by a week it happens in crypto a lot where where you see price coming down and you say this is your entry right where you see price coming down you see the oh sorry you see the price coming down and then what does it do you have to manage that and then what does the price do it just weeks it just weeks into your your price level your entry level then it goes back then the next candle you see is a very bullish candle assuming you have this scenario every time it weeks takes in your order then rallies up take weeks it takes up your order by weeks even maybe assuming the time you got stop that in profit i mean stop that to stop loss assuming that very time this is the scenario that happened maybe the candle was coming down there was candle coming down a down candle then you have a long week then you have a long week like this it does happen in crypto where maybe btc is doing some kind of silly moves maybe a sudden dump or a sudden pump then whatever coin you are trading to just decides to drop at that particular moment then closes back just above your entry line then price rallies back up if this is a situation you are and you do your trade analysis after all your trades you examine you are meant to say that oh oh it's just weak oh it's just weak oh only with night just take me out so you start seeing that not using stop most times we save you getting stop that unnecessarily like in this kind of situation whereas it was just a week that week down took out your stop loss close above where you initially plan to enter then it runs back up to your take profit that is meant to give you some kind of query that oh charlie if i didn't use a stop loss i would have been in the trade and i would have made profit then you stop using stop loss due to that you believe you understand the market then you stop using stop loss so whenever the price takes you in weeks down to where you would have place your stop loss and then comes back you'll be happy that, oh yes i said so and when you stop using stop loss there is no no need of you calculating your risk anymore because you can just decide oh i have ten thousand charlie then out of this ten thousand let me risk ten percent of my account balance so when you risk ten percent of your account balance ten percent is one thousand then you even say you see that okay when you are risking hundred your 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 position size is thousand four but then you can just say well, let me risk 10 percent of my balance you place one thousand 
you you're not using any stop loss no stop loss it takes in your thousand it goes for your 22 percent profit you make money less than 300 because your potential is thousand which is less than this amount so you make less than 300 on that you are test you are test running then the second time you increase the amount to 20 percent which means now you are trading with 2000 now you are trading with 2000 no stop no no risk you are just trading blindly based on oh let me raise 2000 which is 20 percent then it gets in it fits you in then it rallies maybe 27 percent or 20 percent you make good money because there is something we call is it beginner's luck or sometimes the market will do you very well to make sure you are fully welcomed then after trading with 2000 now you have made some profit maybe your balance is around 12,000 now then you decide to go 5,000 in you want to make money because the more you are making money the more you have the desire that you can make much more and when you have those that desire that you can make much more then you start wanting to put your push yourself so that you can quickly buy that Lamborghini who no one do big boy so then you increase your trading amount to 5,000 which is almost like 50 percent of your trading balance then what happens in this kind of situation you are not using stop loss t you expect you expect the price you expect price to to come into your entry zone you expect price to come into your entry zone from up like this maybe it gets to the trend line and then start moving back up that is your expectation right that is your expectation the market can even make you feel fully welcomed the market can make you feel fully welcomed so what happens in this situation is that okay assuming the market gives you a treat it comes into your entry then it chooses to go to your take profit and you are trading with five thousand so when you calculate twenty percent of five thousand how much is that ten percent of five thousand is five hundred then twenty percent then will be two thousand you make a profit of two thousand wow huge now assuming let's say your balance is still ten thousand you have made a profit of two thousand just on this very five thousand trade your balance becomes twelve thousand wow just like that almost 50 percent of the amount to put in into the trade but maybe because you don't want to take the risk of going all in with your twelve thousand or ten thousand you choose again to risk another five thousand and bear in mind from your past experience every time you get taken out is just by a week a week below then closes above so now you have made twelve thousand you get the bunny feeling that oh no 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 charlie charlie and they make money then let's assume you see this five thousand again some people then we even go to trade futures you know individual differences some people will not even say okay i want to risk five thousand on spot they believe they are perfect now they are good out of how many trades they've made they are, they've made some good money decent amount of money if i have added all these amounts maybe your balance will have been fourteen thousand already here yeah. so you see the desire how people have the desire to and greed pushes us to like once more instead of sticking to that little profit and growing it slowly 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 as we are growing our accounts we are also increasing our risk because the percentage is relative to the amount we have we are not just saying okay i want to raise 50 dollars even if your balance is a lot you can keep risking that amount because you will be under trading so what happens such this kind of person might say oh let me even try futures let me let me i have twelve thousand now so let's see here he has twelve thousand now he has made some amount of money then he wants to trade futures now they don't even go for three years or five years because oh charlie this trade eh, is very sure my setup is confirmed it's 100 percent then they go for 20 years they go for 20 years okay um 
Come I'm saying here is I'm not trading with risk, but here I'm still calculating risk. So if it's trading, okay, let's do it like this. If it's trading five thousand, which is like fifty percent of the balance with twenty years, that means his position size will be we have that's twenty is risking five thousand. Not risk, sorry, is he wants to trade with five thousand on twenty years on futures oh 20 years seems too much okay let me just say let me just say let me just say fairness that means his position size will be fifty thousand that means he wants to trade five thousand of his balance that's fifty percent of his of his balance with 10 s on futures and that means 5,000 times 10, 50,000 will be his position size, right? Or let me use 50% here. No, it's good like that. So what happens is that if the trade goes as planned, price trade into your entry zone, takes up your bid, then goes to your take profit. Let's say this is the entry, right? And this is a take profit that is 26 percent if you are taking 26 percent on 50,000 26 percent on 50,000 that's 13,000 that means you are taking a profit of 13,000 wow when you do your calculation sir you said you'll be happy you want to you want to do it because you know every time from your experience every time you have taken a trade this is what happens it comes take your bid then rallies up so you just want to take this risk one time but then what will happen is that the price will come back into it it will come up a bit it will come up a bit so you are seeing it yeah oh yeah it's going up it's going up then it will just drop it will even if you have used up you could have gotten stopped out at maybe an amount you can afford to lose then it will just take you out point blank it will take you out point blank but then it will come down so hard that you won't even be able to do anything and what happens when you trade futures you have liquidation price right depending on the amount you are risking now you have five thousand fifty thousand position size i don't even want to go into the calculation of liquidation right now so let's assume that your liquidation price is here if this is where the liquidation price is and price comes down here, what do you think will happen? You will pin your trouser, right? The market is doing you a Google be careful. But then you 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 are like sweating, 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 like oh damn, you are losing almost all of your five thousand, which is your margin. You are losing almost all the five thousand, half of your balance. Then you choose to quickly salvage whatever you have because you can't tell if the market will just drop down to your liquidation price whereas you lose the whole of 5,000 or it will reverse you can't tell it's still coming down then you choose to sell in loss here and what will then happen is after you sell in loss the market can then reverse and come this may not be a straight line move it might just be in waves I'm just representing it a straight line move so after you sell in loss just because of the fear of not getting liquidated then you see price swelling back to where you could have taken profit then fear sets in i'm diving into fear now if you don't greed i'm diving into fear now so fear sets in the moment you take the trade you want it to do something but it's not doing it it comes down fear sets in but then it still means reaction because it didn't get to your liquidation price something happened that made you to stop using stop loss right because you believe the market doesn't come even if it comes to your stop it just weeks then does what you expect it to do now you see the same thing it comes to take your order it comes up a bit giving you very tiny amounts because you are confident in yourself now that, <clears throat> that you know the market very well and that the market will go according to your plan so it gives you some tiny amounts 
you are expecting 13,000 a year. Maybe he is giving you already 200. You are looking oh good money. Then he comes down with sudden with with very with a very big impulsive move. Very close to your liquidation price. Then you get panic. You panic you sell. And after selling, maybe assuming you have sold here, you can only sell, you can't lose what you don't have. 45,000 of your position size is borrowed. 5,000 is yours. As a me, it's an isolated margin. So, if you have sold there, maybe you have lost 4,000. And what you have left is, is 1,000. So, then you see the price coming back to where you could have taken profit. Maybe in some minutes, depending on the time frame, or hours or some days. It gives you another reaction. Oh, I could have waited. I could have waited. I could have chosen not to panic. You see, you, you 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 sold in fear because you panic that you will lose your own five thousand. But then after selling, the moment the second after which you sold in loss, it rallies back up to where you could have taken profit. So this is giving you some kind of missed fear, confidence, and the greed. We see like ah, Charlie, I for no seller, I for just wait small, I for wait small. And that small waiting you want to wait now is where the greed is still pushing you to lose more, but you won't know. So, what happens again? You won't dear because your balance now has changed from whatever 12,000 is, you have lost 4,000. So now you have 8,000. As your balance, you have lost 4,000 because you quickly sold. Not wanted to get, not wanted to get liquidated to lose your 5,000. So your balance become eight thousand. Then you say, ah, Charlie, okay. But then you are still watching the market to see how it moves. It comes down, takes your order, breaks it, comes close to your liquidation price. But did they eat it? It goes back up. Maybe the next trade you paper trade. You won't actively trade because you are still imagining the the effect the effect of losing four thousand is still doing you bad boost it's still doing you some kind of film trick that you find it hard to believe then you watch the market you you align where you could have entered here you want to enter you want to exit here maybe stop here but you are not using stop then the market when you are not trading it will follow your plan exactly as you want it exactly as you want it when you do not trade then the market will come down weak into your buy zone take your order but you're not in it then comes back to where you expect it to come it will do that maybe for the next two trades trades that you are not even trading to do that then you get some confidence that oh my system see they work that time it was just it was just bad luck then you choose to trade again this time you may want to reduce your margin so let's say you reduce your margin to 2000 but you are still using the 10s so your position size here becomes 20000 your position size becomes 20000 so you have calculated to say oh 20000 from here from this point to this point 26% if you win 26% 20000 plus 26 percent that's 5200 then your mind is really like oh charlie i've made back my loss already then but then your mind won't tell you to use stop loss because you, the last experience was he came close to liquidation he didn't eat the liquidation price before he rallied back up but one thing is common in everything you have seen or done it always gets back to your take profit it always comes back to it so it's giving you the confidence of oh every time it will come back to you sooner or later. Then you go open to take five two hundred thousand five thousand two hundred profits a year. No stop loss. Maybe your liquidation price is also here. But then what will happen is when you didn't trade, it was good according to your plan. Then you choose to trade again, risk two thousand. We did not let you out from your past experience. Market comes, price comes into your entry, takes your price, even gives you a bit more profit here than it did the last time. 
then what will just happen is it will come back maybe to a closer level to the one you sold before but it won't get there so you oh you see a bit far here yeah, and here yeah, you see a bit far to liquidation and from your last experience you sold the moment it came back up so you want to be patient you're telling yourself patience is good patience is what it you are forgetting one thing where well, structure has broken instead of you to follow the structure you are not following the structure now you are trading emotionally you are trading what you think the market will do instead of what the market is showing you we all make this mistake i myself do make this mistake we it's easy to get carried away as with emotions because like i said we are emotional based so what happened in this kind of situation is oh the last time you sold you didn't hit your liquidation then it rallied up so you are expecting it to do the same thing but this is what it will happen it will give you the last chance to come out in a small amount of loss then it will come down and take you out liquidated instantly before you even blink an eye before you know what is happening You are liquidated and what happens when you are liquidated 2000 is gone your balance become 6000 and this is where the real fear starts kicking in you came from after you have raised your account to 12000 or more now you are back to 6000 I beg, I bet you, you won't touch system for the next two, three days. You just be sleep, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Fear go catch you. You see, so the market psychology is what is needed at times, just to help us in situations like this. So you know not to overthink, not to be depressed. But when market has dealt with you, some people will even risk much more than I'm. I'm, 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 mm, how do I say this? Then I'm mm, using as an example here. Some people have ten thousand dollars. They go all in with the ten thousand dollars. They even do it on futures. Some people who are new to the to trading, they just believe, oh, Charlie, my guy just buy best last month. Me, I want to do the same thing. The guy is trading. If he can do that, I can also do it. They don't know the amount of time the guy has put in to really discipline himself before he could get to where he, he is or he was. So when you get liquidated, either by or if you don't even get liquidated, if you are on spot market, maybe your loss starts going big. Your loss starts going big. Your loss starts going big up to the extent that you are looking at the system. It's like, Charlie, you can't stand it. So you fall into a state of depression. Because fear has made the market now is scary to you. Every time you think you have it right, it just does something otherwise. But the first time you were doing it, it was going well when you were using smaller amounts. Greed made you increase the risk or put more money into the trade so that you can make much more quickly. Then you'll be saying, oh, I wish I didn't increase my risk. Maybe then I will still be making money. But then you increase your risk, you also made money at one point. But then the next point, you sold. And after you sold, it came to your profit. So you don't want to make that mistake of selling early. You don't want to be a panic seller when it's the market is against you. You just want to be patient. Patience is good, right? They say. Then you expect it. It's even turning back and like, oh, thank God I didn't say. Thank God I didn't say. But then what happens is, sham. A be careful. A jam. A So you see, so you then enter into a state of depression and right? you lose confidence in, your, in yourself. So your friend can even say, oh, Charlie, please come and me analyze this trade. You just say, you just say. You'll be afraid to even touch laptop or touch phone or touch your street station. You'll sleep for three days. You won't get yourself. When you think you're okay now, your, your mind is calm. Then you come to see the way the market is doing. It's like you're a newcomer. Everything you have learned is like you have unlearned it. You don't know anything. You are just then go back to YouTube and start reading go watching videos how to trade this how to trade that like a beginner and you just get confused at times you won't even go back trading anymore but then it was you you are the cause you allowed greed to take you in you allowed greed to take over you if you have been 
when you have the balance of 10,000, if you are raising 100, risking 100 or 200 to stop, and if it goes your way, you are making at least triple the amount you are risking. So when you lose an amount, you still make it back in the next trade, if the next trade goes in your, in your favor. But then because of the desire, the, the, the feel of wanting to do much, a lot more in so little time, you allow greed to take over you. And when it does, you are a deadly part. Then fear sets in. When you start losing, losing, losing. You will of definitely when you lose a big amount, the next way you take, you will reduce it. You won't want to use that same amount because of fear. And then when you look at the amount you can make, the greed will also say, Ah, this is good money. Let me just risk it. Let me just risk it. Then you risk it and you lose it again. That time you are not thinking straight. And depression will set in. Then you lose confidence in yourself. You don't even know what you are doing anymore. It's like you don't know how to trade again. You just get tired of everything. You get tired of everything. I hope you are able to understand these little things. If I have missed anything, I'm not a professional by any means. I'm just a trader. I'll just trade for my own sake and make my money. I'll take my losses as well. So I'm not a professional. I'm just trying to put this into basic explanatory ways that i can for my people my people there are a lot of youtube videos explaining a lot of these embeds from our people as in our people in west africa i have not really seen a lot so this is why i'm doing this at least i'm be able to use some real life experiences to um, for my own personal experiences too to at least give some discussions out there in which you can better understand <laughs> so don't take me as a professional i am not as a professional trader yes it's what i do so i'm a professional trader but i'm not a professional tutor just doing this for fun and for purpose of guiding others so i received some questions from my guy doctor a doctor a doctor doctor with a trader so he based on the last video i uploaded so the first one is this he said <clears throat> i read somewhere that the amount you choose to risk should depend on how far the invalidation point is for example if you do your ta technical analysis on a particular asset bitcoin for example and you see that your invalidation point is around eight percent negative from your entry then instead of risking the normal $50 that you normally risk that's if you are risking $50 per trade you instead of risking the normal $50 that you normally risk you reduce it to maybe $20 and then if in another scenario the invalidation point is maybe 3 percent negative then you can risk even more than the 50 I want to know if this is a wise trading plan. So let's get this straight. Let me clear this. Let me clear this. Let me just remove. Okay. So the first scenario is if your stop loss invalidation or stop rather is eight percent negative. Mm, let me make a line chart here so this is it we have up move this is a bullish move like we have here i don't want to use this chart so because i'm seeing some critical levels here so i don't want i don't want to assume on it so we don't get it missed like that is where i could have bought if we are buying so assuming this is the entry on this price chart if the price returns to it assuming this is an up move it's not necessarily a straight line like this candle it can be up down up down up according to the rules of failure to it then we have up down down i mean down up down then up down up down blah 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 like that so assuming this it also depends on how you trade because this will have 
being a point of previous resistance expected to turn support sr the supply and demand we look at the point of reversal where you have the bargain price this is a bargain price where it pushed the price up above a previous level or an a previous expensive level which is resistance so you want to find your demand anywhere here so support and resistance people may trade there but one thing i do notice is that price may be coming down coming to your support resistance and support right then goes back and then comes into demand then does this it just how uh, it do happen but when you look at it it's just like the elliot wave pattern where you have where you have from an up move you have a b c so your support and resistance c works but maybe for a little then comes back down deeper into the wave here we are one two three four five then we have a b c right at this point of resistance sometimes it's just like sometimes it's just be a like this b like this a truncated one then c then c on your on your resistance of support then it rallies up so it can be either way but for the sake of this question so assuming we are buying here this one price break this structure from our market structure once price comes down and breaks this low and breaks this low if price breaks this low we expect that the market is turning downward so we expect something like this and continue downward some people will see this as oh say this is head and shoulder pattern you see they will say it's head and shoulder so but then once price breaks a low leading to an higher high and price breaks it and closes underneath it then you should be careful if you are taking long trades because it's a recipe for more down movement so now the question says if your invalidation price oh god say if your invalidation price is eight percent negative from your entry so this is our entry assuming this is our entry let's give it a bit of distance this is our invalidation price once price close below this then we know we are wrong on the trade so now the question is if now let's assume that this move from this point your entry to this point the invalidation level is eight percent negative minus eight percent the total move is negative eight percent year to year is eight percent negative so this is where you want to have your stop loss this is your entry so maybe you are risking is a if you are risking the normal 50 dollar okay so you enter you enter here if price gets here you lose 50 you risk 50 here so if price gets here you lose 50 we don't have to check how much she wants to make now but assuming you are taking you are you are trading with three r as in one to three risk reward risk reward so if your if the price is your target wherever it is from this trade you are making a profit of you are making a profit of 150 on a three hour setup you are making a profit of 150 right so now okay then there is another scenario of if the invalidation price is maybe three percent negative let me draw it again so this is it we have this move this move then this move then this is our buy zone and let me this is our buy zone 
our invalidation price is clearly here this is our invalidation price when price closes below this and this is our entry price so the distance between the entry sorry the distance between the entry the distance between the entry to the invalidation point is three percent negative minus three percent if i may ask you guys when once price comes back into this or if or when price comes back into this like this and this like this which one do you think has the highest probability of taking you out easily yeah okay which one has is it the eight percent move that has the highest probability of taking you out easily or the closer one has the highest probability of taking you out the distance price will travel from here assuming we are on the same asset so here is eight percent the year to year is three percent which means this is a tight stop this is a tighter stop tight stop loss it's very tight here is even double the amount of this by the time this asset will have taken you out here this one will still be somewhere around here it won't have taken you out on the eight percent negative whereas here you already stopped out where here is there is a probability for going up assuming the price is then close just below this and this doesn't close below this or uh, it doesn't close below it what will you say you say oh this one now we just maybe retrace up a bit then come down more why this one has a higher probability of going up so now the second part of the question is if invalidation prices we have for you then instead of risking 50 dollars if 50 dollars is your risk then you should reduce it to 20 now see he say if you are on like this kind of setup where you have a wider stop your risk should reduce to 20 but then if you are on a tighter stop you can you can even risk more than 50 so now here you want to risk assuming the person is saying you can risk like here you are risking 50 you can risk more than 50 which means you can risk more than around 70 now see it this one has the higher probability of taking you out easily in a blink of an eye this one will take double effort of this to take you out here see now three percent eight percent six percent is double and it's this is even still much inside so this one has more room to breathe for the trade yeah it's like you are giving it more space You are giving it more space there is more space here from here to eight percent for it to breathe so price can even do whatever it likes price can come into it like it comes down go up go down like all those normal normal thing you are giving it you are giving it room to breathe but if this kind of scenario happens here like this what do you think will happen there is possibility of it taking you out. Even say you use yourself and don't want it to take you out before you take yourself out. So now, is it wise for you to risk a lesser amount here? And which means if this trade eventually go to your take profit after it after taking your order and comes to your trade profit take profit target here now you'll be making on a three year instead of the 150 here you'll be making 60 dollars and the take profit you'll be making 60 dollars whereas here if if you risk on a tighter stop you'll be making if it doesn't take you out this will be times three that is 140 to 10 140 here yeah. then to 10 right yes to 10 That is the plan, right? That is the plan. But which one will you rather 
risk an higher amount? Is it this one that has more probability of not taking you out no matter the move or this one that has the higher probability of taking you out in a think of an eye if i say i'm to say i will say this is not a wise trading plan i will rather risk a bigger amount here because this we also need triple the amount here triple the eight percent before like 20 something percent before you can make this 60 dollars you are risking it eight percent then eight percent times three sorry that's 24 so you need 24 percent 24 percent to make 60 dollars you save after the trade you look at yourself you won't be happy because you have wasted like this much effort from the coin move it 24 percent just for it to make to make 60 dollars but then here that you have the higher probability of taking yourself out where you should have risked less because here your three are let me let me do this here now will be 24 percent so three ah, that's three r is three 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 to one risk reward here you need a move of 24 percent to make 60 dollars but this one has a higher chance of taking you out and what will be the what will they move to take to make this two time will like what will it have be it will have be three times three that is nine you need a nine percent move you need a nine percent move to three hour so be, why is it that because this is a tight stop the tighter the stop the quicker you make the money the faster you make the profit if it comes to your take profit but it also has higher risk because the stop is tight so it has a higher risk of taking you out maybe 70 percent chances of taking you out before even going back for the take profit but this one has a lot of room to breathe it has a lot of space to play if the market is not ready to reverse easily look at this scenario here oh which scenario should i use though? Mm. i'm looking for something I'm looking for something we can use on here. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Look at this move. Some people will see this is the bullish candle taking out an eye. They say it's supply and demand. They choose to enter here. Then they choose to put stop just below here. What happened? Price came into it, took out their stop, then comes back as they would have wanted it, right? Not before doing some some little Tom and Jerry play here before coming back up. Forget the crash. But then, if you are using a big stop, maybe maybe this stop is even say maybe it's two percent okay like three percent they assuming this is an eight percent stop you see the price came into it did tom and jerry blah 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 for a while before coming back up it didn't take you out if you have used a wider stop it didn't take you out but because of that tight stop you have used from here to here like that it took you out second the moment he even feel the other is was the moment he took you out so you see it tighter stop has a higher probability of taking you out before doing what you expect it to do whereas a bigger stop has less probability of taking you out so you want to risk higher on the one with a tight i mean with a big stop and risk lower amount on the one with a tight stop in order to avoid losing 
but you can keep your risk the same no matter the distance it is you can keep your risk to be 70 years 70 years but bear in mind the distance for you to make your three to one risk reward here on a tight stop we under nine percent you have made your money whereas here under 24 percent is before you can make your three hour so you can choose to keep your risk the same instead of lowering the big stop to online okay assuming you have reached this time stop and you decided to wait for this 24 percent more what do you think will happen you will make triple if not double yeah triple almost triple of this amount on this move if you have reduced this amount here it on 24 it will still be 210 because of the white stop every eight percent is one hour so two eight percent is like that 16 percent will be two hour which is double the amount you have bricks but if you take this tight stop and you choose to wait for 24 percent that is no longer three hour that is going for like six hour as a six to one risk reward then you make like more than this on a move like this but it's not advisable to risk lower on a trade with tighter stop and it needs more time and more distance to go before it can give you your three hour and risk an higher amount on something that needs very small move to take you out i hope you are, i hope you understand personally i will risk much more here and risk low amount here because this one take off and night it can take me out easily why this one we have more room to play like i showed you with this then the second question is paraventure i decide to use a specific amount anytime i trade maybe hundred dollars so if you keep your risk at hundred dollar static no matter the distance to invalidation okay if maybe after i've made some profits and i've compounded those profits and my trading capital has increased is it okay to increase my risk amount or one should just continue risking the same hundred dollars irrespective of the growth in the trading capital okay this is it you are saying you are saying if if okay let's assume you have one thousand dollars no let's say ten thousand you have ten thousand dollars you are risking one percent of this ten thousand which is hundred and over time maybe a month you have compounded your balance to be twenty thousand that's an hundred percent growth over time once your balance is twenty thousand, will you still risk this same one hundred dollars? Remember, one hundred dollars now on your new capital is zero point five percent. One hundred dollars on this twenty thousand is zero point five percent. Because one percent of twenty thousand dollars will be two hundred. So if you keep your risk in percentage relative to your balance, say I want to risk just one percent of my balance, no matter if the balance is one million dollars, hundred thousand dollars, one billion naira or CDs, it's one percent risk. So as is in relative to your balance if your balance then becomes one hundred thousand dollars if your balance become one hundred thousand dollars your risk of one percent will be equal to one thousand dollars right but if you have grown your account to hundred thousand dollars will you still risk one hundred dollar on a trade if you lose one thousand from hundred thousand, you still have ninety nine thousand. 
But the problem now is some people will look at $1,000 and say, Ah, well, Bob, this now salary of somebody for the month. Oh, they will say, Ah, am I sure I want to risk this move in just one second or, or five minutes or in a day? Somebody's salary. Am I sure I want to risk it in a day and just dash it to the market like that? But you are forgetting you have 100,000 and this is just a small amount of your total amount. And if you win on that trade, 3R, you'll be making 3,000. Which is good. And here, if you are risking 1%, which is 200 on 20,000 20, balance, and you make 3R, you are taking 600. So instead of you now to take 3,000 on this when you have a balance of 100,000, instead of you take 3,000 on a 3-hour move, and you bet you choose to limit your risk to 100, 3-hour move will give you 300. And you make 300 or, or with a $100,000 account. That is under trading. It's quite a lot of under trading. And this thing is caused by fear. Because you do not want to risk much more, because you do not want to lose fear of losing. So just keep the percentage amount you are risking on any amount relative, as in percentage, which is relative to your account balance. When you have a smaller amount, you can choose, or maybe in a month, you can choose, you can choose to risk an amount you want, and then trade with that then when you compound your account to an extent change it maybe okay you want you have ten thousand you are risking one hundred your account has gone we under the month to fifteen thousand but you are still risking a hundred then after the month a new month you assess your balance then you adjust your risk relative to your balance you can do that I have one file here too that I used to calculate some things relative to balance okay i mean relative to trading different types because different people another thing you can do is okay another thing you can do is if you have a balance of say ten thousand you have a balance of ten thousand to keep your risk in check you can just assess yourself how much do you need in a month maybe to pay bills and stuff you don't want to over trade and you do not want to under trade so you assess and say how much do you need in a month to do things then you like half you okay you discover you need maybe three thousand or let's say two thousand in a month to pay bills and transport and blah 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 like that then two thousand a month how many days are you trading in a month Maybe you trade for 15 days, so, 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 so days, then you divide the 2,000 by the amount of days you are trading. Say you are trading for 15 days in a month, which means every trading day, you want to make at least $133 every trading day. You want to make at least $133. How many trades? Do you want to trade or how do you assess your risk in this kind of situation? That was why I created this as a file. Assuming you have 10,000 as your balance here. Assuming if that is 10,000, then okay, daily target. Okay, daily target, this is 133, right? What is the percentage of 133 on? That's like 1.3%. So your daily target is like 1.3 percent if i'm right let me just calculate it 133 yeah 1.3 percent so your daily target 1.33 percent which means daily profit i get 133 dollars yes how much of your capital are you trading with if you choose not to go by risk manager but you want to use a percentage of your of your capital like 10 percent five percent depending on you then if you are risking 10 percent of your balance per trade 
that means you are trading with position size of one thousand dollar per trade and what is your target percentage as in what is the expected move from your entry to your take profit if it's if it's seven percent as i have listed there then on that move you are taking a profit of seventy dollars which means number of successful trades you need to take for that day is two right but if here you are targeting maybe 15 percent that means in that single trade you are making 150 dollars which means the number of successful trades you need to take for that day is one time limit per trade you have the whole 24 hours to take one trade and make 150 dollar on this but then if you are going by risk reward you want a three hour then you have to risk 44 dollars to risk 44 dollars then you take maybe number of four trades your daily risk is 44 dollars on any trade you take at all not per trade but then what you are risking per trade will be 11 dollars then you take the number of trades assuming you want to take just one trade then what happens is for that one trade you risk just 44 dollars and that will earn you 33 133 now if you are risking 44 44.333 times 3 hour, you see that's 133 so that this is a way to calculate at times your risk or if you choose to just use an amount of percentage from your account or you want to use risk reward if here you are going with 5 hour then your risk instead of being 44 will be 26 for you to make 133 dollars for that trading day if you are sticking with 3r and you don't want to take one single trade for that day maybe you want to take three trades three successful trades right you want to take three trades then or maybe simultaneously then each of those trades you should use a risk of 14 points seven 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 eight dollars which is like fifteen dollars in each of those three trades you can take them simultaneously but the total risk you are taking for the day is 44 to earn you an amount of 133 dollars so that is the way i calculate my my risk apart from this one that has to do with leverage because of features and when i take when i scale into 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 a coin this is the way i also calculate my average price i made an answer for this so it doesn't weigh me out these are long time data from like a year ago i think so that is it guys if there is any other question please do not hesitate to let me know i spent so much time i didn't hesitate to spend this long but then it happens like that if there is anything i've made we have made a mistake too do not hesitate to point call my attention to it so i can correct myself thank you guys